Hey yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have Brett Raybold. Raybold? Raybold. Raybold. Uh, he's back again. I love this dude. Um, he talks about his play. Um, is it okay to talk to an ex? How to pick up a stripper? Um, and he talks about his new um play called Race the Movie the Play. Check that out at uh, Race the Movie dot uh, the Play dot com. Um, also, don't forget the Patreon. Sign up for the Patreon. Um, yeah, that's right. Consultations. DanteNero.com. God, Harry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean no, I was going to say the Patreon is where we do our bonus content. And uh, for a small fee a month, it helps support the show and keep the show going. And uh, we do bonus content like this week's episode. We continue our conversation with Brett Raber- Raybold uh, as we discuss why perspectives in life, ma- in life matters, small tr- uh, tips on speaking with women, and also some uh, Patrice O'Neill and Bill Burr stories. So that's all exclusively over at uh, Patreon.com slash Manschool202. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution being podcasted. And I am excited. Uh, we got a special guest this time. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, <laughs> uh, but this time I mean it. First and foremost, I got my partner in crime. Uh, what's going on, Harry? What's going on? Hey, buddy. What's going on? I'm doing great. Life is good. I can't complain. I, can't. I mean, I do complain, but nobody cares. It's fine. Nobody's, nobody's listening. It's, it's not worth complaining about, but that doesn't stop me from complaining. You uh, you ready to rock and roll? Cause, Absolutely. Uh, always. Um, all right. Well, uh this is a yeah. friend of the show has been on the show before. He's got some shit that he wanted to promote out and always like talking to him and always like watching to see where uh, his Bitcoin is going. <laughs> he's always doing something strange and different in comedy. Something different. And so right? he's got another thing for us today. He's got a, uh, got a good life. Got a good life. Hashtag why not, right? That's right. That's um, right. Give it up for Brett, y'all. Give it up for Brett. Brett know? Raybold, yeah. everybody. Brett what Raybold. Up, Brett? How you hey, doing, bro? It's great to be here. I'm ready to get my balls back, yo. <laughs> How's yeah. that been working? We gave you a little advice last I, time we spoke. How's that work? I, you know what? It's been good. I mean, you know, I like to think uh, I'm with the new lady. You know, I had a breakup, but it was like a chill breakup. Mm-hmm. I, I've I've had this is my third uh, adult relationship. And right. uh, yeah, that breakup was like chill and relaxed. Mm-hmm. And the one before it was like messy and awful. And then now right. in the new relationship, three, four months in, mm-hmm. it's going well. I got my balls. I hope at least. How did the- as long as you, I mean, we always have them. We just, the problem is keeping them. That's mm. the problem. You know. Yeah. It, it's uh just through through. You know, I used to always say that there's no uh, there's no vacations in manhood. You don't get it. You don't get a vacation on that. You gotta you gotta show up every day, uh-huh. and if you don't. You will lose your balls. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, like you got to communicate what you need. And, mm. uh, you know, I think you got to be with a person who there are expectations for it can be sometimes different as a comic in a relationship sure. too, just in terms of the work hours and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, because we aren't as, you know, prototypically nine to five our hours are more yeah, but sporadic. To, to be honest i know plenty of nine to five guys who who are home and and their woman is still lonely even though they're home you know so what i mean i i think what has to happen is i i think what we're talking about really is a quality time as opposed to just time in general and and i think uh the, the one thing about a comic a comic has uh has legitimate uh excuses for not not that you need a legitimate excuse i mean the reality is if you're with somebody and you don't want to be with them and you you don't want to spend time with them then uh you know you are uh what are you doing you know what i mean i mean why even do that right Right. that's a uh yeah the idea of quality time is definitely one that my lady has helped impress upon me just in terms of like sitting and watching something at the end of the day yeah. doesn't really count as right. us being together. That's us like right. downtiming it is different from like, oh, we're actually, 
you know, Engaging. doing something interesting, well, or mean, if it's it, just going to the park, it doesn't have to be like a yeah. But it, it it all depends on. I think it all depends on, and then I think it's reasonable to think about certain things in terms of what somebody wants or what they don't want. Uh, it doesn't have to be. I mean, it could be sitting and watching something if that's what she's into. I mean, I, I think that we have a standard of what we think it should look like. And that really doesn't matter. The, the bottom line is, you know, again, as I've said this at least a hundred times is it, relationships are really easy. Uh, it's uh, what is um, sort of like, uh, what are your non-negotiables and then never negotiate them. And if our non-negotiables don't match up, that's what I don't, I don't have to be mad at you. Um, right. I just, we just don't match up, you know, um, you, you, I mean, I think in just recognize and being honest about what you're looking for, because if you're not getting what you want anyway, what, I mean, what are you doing? Like, no, really? Do you, oh, sorry to cut you no, off. No, no, no. I was Go ahead. No, totally. I was going to ask you, I mean, you obviously, uh, I think you talk with a lot of guys who are either maybe wanting to get in a relationship or are in one. Yeah. Do you find that people just stay in things where they're not oh, absolutely. having a good time just because the Band-Aid pull off is sometimes. All I don't hard know if you heard of my good friend, uh, uh, Johnny Depp. <laughs> you know, Your friend, friend of the show. Couldn't get him. Friend, friend to of the go show. I mean, he doesn't, listen, he doesn't listen li nearly enough as he as he should. But. I mean, the uh, and then they, I had a client the other the other day, Will Smith. I don't know if you heard it. <laughs> He's an actor. He does some small films here and there. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so you know, I mean, but I think that that's really a uh, that that's really a testimony to how 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 far up it goes. <laughs> totally, it that's that type of stuff is fascinating to go like. Oh, like I, I heard Will Smith in a actor's roundtable, you know, when they do those. Things, right, 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 right. And um, he said such an unhealthy perspective. He, he was telling a story about how when he was like 16, he got cheated on. And his takeaways, he said on the round table, he goes, at that moment, I told myself I was going to become the biggest actor in the world so that it would never happen again. Oh, really? Oh, he actually, so that came out of that. Dude, I oh, swear that no. was like a direct quote. And I remember you like in retrospect, you're just like, oh, first off, you're like, that's not how it works. No. Like, it's not like clearly, even if you're a man of insane success and stature, yes. it's that's not how it works. And then obviously it didn't work out that way either in the literal sense. Right. It's just like, oh boy, Will William. Yeah. Um, well, it's 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 a yeah, weird he took thing. The wrong lesson from that whole situation. Yeah. Totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's funny because uh, Harry and I talk about this all the time. It's, we talk about like the whole Me Too movement and and uh uh <laughs> Am I thinking Weinstein? I keep I get, I mix one are the you pedophile thinking about? and the, uh, the Weinstein is not a pedophile. Everything right. was a well, you know, uh, that remains to be seen. But that's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, he's powerful uh, in Hollywood. There's I don't a know. 10 I don't chance. know why you're going to bat for Weinstein. Well, I don't know what the fuck your problem is. You. Uh, Yo, I'm trying to get cast in the next the Weinstein comeback movie. I, I think he's going to start producing small feet independence. Very independent. <laughs> he's got the money. He's very got small. the money. Very small. Very the Epstein small. is you thinking of? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, which one? No, Epstein. Weinstein. Weinstein is the one I was thinking of. Okay. Epstein um, was like trafficked young under. Yeah, right, 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 right. So my, my point is what Harry and I used to say until Harry started uh you know defending oh Weinstein. jesus let's not let's not get that rumor started that's not at all just because, you have, apologize, just because which... you have a shitty memory can't remember now all of a sudden i'm defending pedophiles this is how does this happen Avid, how, am I, a, how am i an advocate for pedophiles all of a sudden because you can't remember two separate sex offenders no, I, how see, about I this remember, you want to yeah. hear something fuck it harry you just what? mixed them up again 
Probably. <laughs> you, <laughs> Harry, you're mixing up your dear friends. Come on, bro. Good friends. You, what kind of friend are you, Harry? Misunderstood no. friends. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey <laughs> Epstein, our mentor, Bill Cosby. <laughs> I I just call him Webstein. So oh, Web, that covers that it's covers it. covered either way. Webstein. So which one were you referring to, Dante? Uh, what are we talking about? Okay, Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein. Like we, you and I have talked about this several times. Sure. A guy like that who does and says exactly what what Will Smith said, which is uh, that um, I'm going to become rich and famous enough. Um, that nobody will ever do that. But what Weinstein and these guys do, I will become rich and famous enough so that I will bend everybody's will and everybody who doesn't find me attractive, if they don't, I will make them have sex with me. And it, it's not going to matter what they think or what they don't think. I'm going to make them so. And and one of the things that I've had this argument with women a lot of time is that guy is probably not the best boss in general. Uh, I understand right. that he is he likes sex and he likes women, likes pussy. And just because he doesn't like man ass doesn't mean he's a great guy. So that everybody that works works for him is subject to him being a fucking idiot who a piece of garbage who has has feels uh, offended by the fact that he's not attractive or not whatever or doesn't get the attention that he wants and he treats everybody like shit because he has power over them and he controls them it controls them anyway and had he had he had been interested in uh in men terry cruz would have had a problem you know what i mean he would have definitely because <laughs> you know terry, all up. terry lets it happen even if it's in his, with his wife watching so <laughs> is that, I've never heard that one. Is that a th- is Terry Cruz a into well, the cuck shit? Oh no, no, he's not, well, no. Uh, what mm, I don't know. Terry oh, Cruz, my bad. Terry Cruz got grabbed. He he basically came out as saying he got me too by oh. a, a director or something. Grabbed his balls in oh, front wow. of his wife, and uh, he came out and said he got me too. And then. Uh, Wow. D.L. Hughley was like, you know, I, you know, I get that you want to go along to get along because you want to get these parts. I said, he says, but this is in front of your wife. And so he Terry Crews threatened and threatened to kick uh, uh, D.L. Hughley's ass. And and then D.L. Hughley being a comic was like, oh, you you want to kick my ass, <laughs> but you don't want to <laughs> kick the ball grabber's ass. You're fine with him. He he goes and then the you know DL starts roasting. He goes, isn't the whole point of working out to get muscles so that you don't have that happen? You, so people don't kick sand in your face, right. and then you get all these muscles, and then you let people you know, I will not kick your sand in your face, but grab your your nobules or whatever you know, like and you know. That's- so he got really tough with DL, That's and then DL was man. like, "Oh me, oh you want to get tough with me? Okay." You know, that's that's so funny. You have a yeah. misplaced target. Yeah, well, Terrence. not really, because he, you know, it goes to show you what kind of integrity he has that he wouldn't stand in for himself. And that when it comes to the money, he'll do whatever he has to do for the money and then not stand up, which is, you know, which is a whole nother thing. Um, But uh, he's also been a, a kind of a racial apologist as well really yeah yeah he's he's like you know just pull yourself up by your bootstraps i mean come on you know he's he's on that bullshit too so um make your own make your own path and speaking of harry you should pull your pants up come on dude Um, hey listen (laughs) this is the i thought that was the whole reason we do these things via zoom yeah so you don't have to pull your pants up what's the point what's the point fair enough fair enough i didn't i didn't sign up for this to yeah. just not do it my way. You're doing do a Sinatra Jeffrey Tobin. <laughs> oh, the Tobin? Yeah, the Jeffrey Tobin. <laughs> you know, that was the most victimless crime. As far it as all was, these, that's how bad things ha- how bad things are. Like, so what was he doing? He's just jerking off. Like, that's it? The guy was just <laughs> jerking off when he thought the all right. And then yeah, you really want to you really want to upset Louis CK. 
<laughs> oh boy. <laughs> when you go, oh, all he did was jerk off. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Take it easy. Oh well, no, that's different. That wasn't in front of anybody. But uh Ray, uh Ray. Brett. He also like, Jeffrey Tobin also didn't ask permission. That's another he didn't, thing. but he also didn't know it was in front of anybody. Right, that's the difference. Enough. I think Louie was well aware there was someone else in the room. <laughs> well, that's why he asked yeah. for permission. That's true. That's His true. mother raised him right. It's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Goddamn it's right. called manners, everybody. It's called <laughs> being a gentleman. M-A-N-N-E-R-S. Yeah. Manners. Yes. So. manners. <laughs> uh, Brett, what was the uh, what was the relation? Why did the last relationship end for you? Here we go. Uh, yeah. It was one of those ones where uh i think it was just I like two it. ships passing in the night type of thing where it was just like i think we just didn't have that next level connection and i feel mm. like we both liked each other we both got along well but uh and they were a cool person but it was just kind of like a sense of needing something more i think for both of us um yeah, yeah it's not almost- all relationships are meant to be for the long term you know it's sometimes people can enjoy each other's company for a bit and you know, Absolutely. exchange that energy and experience and it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't have to be forever, but that's how you discover the ones that are forever. Yeah. yeah. And that was a woman who like, I, I, you know, I almost would want to see her again just to be like, how's it? How you been? Like in a very friend way, not yeah, yeah. remotely, um, you know, remotely. There's no part of me that has any like feelings. Well, why wouldn't over. you do that? Why wouldn't you? make that call it just feels awkward to do so or? Uh, maybe a little more time i don't want to you know i'm like somewhat new in this relationship i don't want her to feel like oh, okay i'm contacting an ex and like you know i don't i would tell her what i would do to make her comfortable but I yeah, yeah. you know i don't yeah. want her to think like it, she's not like the jealous type she's not yeah like, but i mean i think you if you if you went all in just yo this is something I really, we just weren't, and I'm just really happy. You could always preface it by, you know, I wanted to make this call because I'm really happy with my situation, and I appreciate the fact that we we did separate because I wouldn't have found you, and then she'd be like, yeah, call her guy. Yeah, tell her that you don't want her anymore. <laughs> yeah, and I, that woman probably, it's not like she would be like, oh, f- waiting by her phone. Finally, yeah. a text from Brett. I've yeah. needed this for yeah. months. It was like she had all of her shit together and everything. And yeah, was, uh, I am. Um, cool, I just, attractive lady. It's funny. I just I just kind of broke it off with somebody because we weren't having enough sex. And yeah. uh, and mm-hmm. people go, well, I mean, that's shallow. And I go, no, no, it's not. It's, no. it's what I want. And it's funny because I said I said there's one of uh, one of three things that are happening here. Either number one, you don't want to fuck me. Which I get it. I mean, I, I don't want to fuck me sometimes. And uh, two is you're fucking somebody else, which I get it. If you want somebody else, that's I mean, what can you I mean, you can't fight that. I mean, I, I can't be mad at you right. because it's cinema it's or maybe you're just not a sexual person in that way. And all of the above um, kind of is why not we are not going to be together. For you. It doesn't not, matter why. It's not compatible for you. And so I said, well, you know, I just kind of feel like this. You're this way. And, you know, she was like, it's not that I'm not attracted to you. I just, you know, whatever, Uh, whatever the circumstances is, what my wife being in England or whatever. And then I was like, well, um, you know, so she made it clear that she had to let me know that in all of her other relationships, she was always the sexual aggressor. And I was like, I don't know why you would tell me that um, unless you're trying to fucking turn the screws. But I, that was one of the three reasons why I said why this doesn't work. Uh, I don't know why you had to make it clear which one it was, but OK, I go. It's still <laughs> this still remains that you don't want to fuck me and I don't want to spend time with somebody that doesn't want to fuck me. And I, I think one of the things that it really. Um, uh, what this is, every time I go through a situation with somebody, I realize how important uh, the lesson is. So I don't ever make that lesson again. Uh, I don't even make that mistake again. And what I realize is um, because I, I was married before. And one of the reasons why I got divorced in the first place was because uh, the, the, the sex just went to shit. And one of the things that I would say to guys anytime, if the sex is not good when you go into the relationship, marriage is not going to make it better. That's, it's, yeah. 
it's only going to get worse. Yeah. Well, seldom do people go, you know, now that we're older and now that we've been together longer, it's we like should we should fuck more we're fucking more. It's so crazy. Um, <laughs> although I have heard situations where women have become older in their 50s and they're becoming their sexual prime and they want it all the time. And then the, the guy is. But I mean, if you got to wait that long to fucking get your dick stuck, you I mean, like, right. Yeah, um, you can't hold out for that. Yeah, I like to think my prime is like LeBron. I've been in my prime for my whole career. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been in my sexual prime. <laughs> <laughs> well, for now, anyway, right? You're as best as you can be right now. Um, the dick does age well, at least. I, I don't know what age the the dick is at its at its peak i'm sure it's different for every man but yeah that you know at least from my personal experience young youthful less experienced dick is never great i mean it there's never any issues with like hardness or anything like that but just in terms of experience right you just the dick is still just like holy shit vagina yeah yeah like you're too you're not you're not present yeah you're rushing through you like yeah Sex drive is in thirties, early forties, and a woman's starts, men's hmm. uh, starts usually to decline. Testosterone starts to slowly yeah. decrease around age thirty-five. Tick, oh. Typically, uh, goes down by about one percent per year. It could go down faster in some men. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. could also get you could always get some tests. You know, when you get low T, you could always get a couple of shots. Kind of revs the engine. You know, jump starts the engine a little bit, but. You're right. I mean, I also find that I find that I'm definitely not the person. I mean, I'm I'm more precise. And I think I'm a better lover, but I also feel like uh, if I'm not uh, into it, I'm just not into it. You, you know, I'm just like if the person is not into it, I'm not into it. I, I would rather not. Then that's why I've never then, enjoyed uh, strip clubs or whatever, to be honest. I oh, never liked the facade of it. Yeah, I never enjoyed the thing of like uh, someone pretending that they like me just in general i mean i, I have totally dates. agree yeah like it's just that the notion of that or even paying for sex always i was just like i don't yeah pay for, pay for sex but come on harry you've been with me in strip clubs and i'm bagged but you, you, you have but me. you're actually they legitimately like look i dated a stripper at one point right early on it's it it can happen but that's that's the outlier my point is i don't like going in there cold and, you know, I have cash in my hands and then they're like, hey, you want it? Yeah, like, but I, I, I mean, stuff. it bothers me. I understand don't like me. what the what it's supposed to be. Right. Sure. Yeah. But I I mean, you've watched me go into a yeah. strip club with money in hand and the whole nine. Right, but and I've, still... I've never seen you get a lap dance at a strip club. Oh, no, I would never do that. That's my point, though. You have you have gone into a strip club and you've talked to. You've talked to dancers or whatever, and you've made a connection a and, you've got, and you've dated of the sure. women that I know. That's different. <laughs> That's different but, than going in there and paying for it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I mean, going in it. Here's my thing, Harry. I mean, going in it, you don't have to go. Nobody's saying you have to go in and get a, a lap dance. Are you saying Correct. you don't like just the whole process of getting a lap dance and the, the facade of that? Yes, correct. Because yeah. it doesn't have to be. I mean, I mean, you've seen me flip that on its ear in minutes. Yeah. You know, and yeah, then, but it's not through pain. I saw you do it. You you basically ignore them and then you have a real conversation with them. You've never gone in there. No, with a uh, with waving money in the air, going. Hey, oh no, no, but I mean, I right? wouldn't yeah. do that at a fucking regular club. I understand. And there's guys that do that at a regular club. So I mean, the dynamic. That's the dynamic too. of, huh? Right. It's I think that's too, but I'm saying too. that. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't. But I mean, I think the dynamic of it. I I think. Uh, I mean, you got your girl. I mean, but if you yeah. you have enough right now to go into a strip club. And pull a very nice young lady out I'm of there. Sure, I and I and, and I have, have a nice save her. Save her. Oh, sorry, save I don't. Oh, I'm not saving nobody. But I'm I mean, I I definitely will go. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'll go in and pull two or three numbers out of there that I'm mm. talking. You know, followed up on later. But but that's also because I don't. You know what I think? I guess you know what I'm thinking, Harry. Is yeah. when you say that, I think. When you think about it like that, it's not just the dynamic of the strip club. It's the fact that you're assuming that these stripper women are 
different in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like you, like you think they're different than it's almost like saying they're different than regular women. Oh, I think that sounds well, kind of weird. Regular women. But, you know, that strip club, women the average are different. Girl. I understand the context. I mean, if a girl is is smoking hot and she wears she, she's at a place, you know, at a hot club, she's looking for the VIP and the bottles. Yeah. If and if she, she goes up to, to me and goes, hey, can you buy me a drink? I go, no. Yeah. Not, yeah. I'm, I'm I agree what have you that, done though. to earn a drink? What do you mean, Brett? What do you mean? You agree with which part? I agree with I mean, uh, I I agree with like not buying someone a drink. I think it's like a. In this context of like at a strip club, I'm with you. The one time I went to a strip club, I've been once and I would they would come up and they would do the like, you know, the thing of, oh, and I didn't even dress nice. I dressed in a T-shirt and freaking khaki shorts. And then I think they probably go young guy who is dressed poorly. He's actually the rich, rich one. Really, what it is, is I just didn't dress up. Because right. I've never been. And everyone else is like, you know, in collared shirts and suit jackets. And I would tell them straight up, I would go, listen, I'll be really honest. I am not going to pay money for a lap dance. If you'd like to talk for 10 minutes to have a nice conversation, I will do that. But I understand you're working and you need to make money. So go talk to other people so you can work and make money. And what's their talk. response? I mean, that's actually the best game in the world, you could pop one out of there real easy saying <laughs> I, I, I uh, would had a few conversations and then I would go, all right, go, you know, go to your job. I did get one number of not a stripper. It was the host, like the, the woman at the front. Oh, okay. And the, yeah, I thought she was the prettiest gal there. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember how we started talking, but I was able to get her number, <laughs> text her a few days later. She was like, let's do a date. I was like, great. Then the date rolled around an hour before she's like, oh, I got this thing came up and then, mm. you know, and then she was like, oh, we'll reschedule. And then I text her one more time. She didn't respond. And I was like, yeah. All right, no reason to. Well, I mean, that's like any other woman in every. Yeah. Uh, my, my point being is the environment. If you if women, you know, I mean, you know, to be honest, if somebody's doing this they think that this is a financial situation where they can make some good money on it of course um, yeah. but they're but they're and they probably don't have other options or at least they don't have other options that are that are more lucrative um because right. if they did they wouldn't um i don't know i've never met a woman who just loves the strip club you know what i mean it's kind of what you do because it's what you have to do it's kind of like bouncing like every dude over 250 pounds with a black t-shirt and <laughs> Carbo pants stands in front of somebody's <laughs> club, somebody somewhere and makes people feel uncomfortable about their self-worth. But um, the 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 reality is, is people do what they want, what they what they can, what they can do based on what their resources are. And to think sure. of women any different than any other. I get the, the context of the con. I mean, let, let's be honest, if you if you're in a club and, and somebody's looking for VIP, that's shallow and then. But I mean, all of that. I mean, we navigate that no matter what, what no matter what the profession is. Mm-hmm. And I honestly think it's really easy to to pull strippers because um, they already feel as though they're in control. They, Interesting. They already know. They feel like they're in control. <laughs> I know what this is. I know what you want. And then all of a sudden, when you show that, uh, yo, I'm not. That's not what I want. Then they're they're instantly intrigued. Because how often because you're so different than everybody else that that goes in the club. Everybody else is kind of into the facade of the, you know, the whole play that goes in. Speaking of plays, um, <laughs> what a, this guy's a season a vet. segue. This guy is a season vet. I could talk about strip clubs all day. <laughs> you, you're in a play. Uh, you wanted to promote this play race. Um, yes. It's funny because I just did a serious radio with Dean Edwards and Dean Edwards is on it. I did not know that Andre was in it. And uh, yeah, Andre and Eagle Wick. What's is the uh, it. play? It's, it's race the play, the movie. That's a race, race the, the movie, the, the play. Yeah. It's uh yeah, we did a three run, three show run at the for the New York Theater Festival. Sold out all three shows. Nice. We won best script. I somehow won best actor of the really? festival. I don't know how. 
I'm uh, not being fake humble. I am not an actor, but I did do a silly voice and I jumped around a lot on stage. Okay. Um, genuinely, Dean was also nominated. Dean right. should have won because Dean is a phenomenal actor yeah, yeah. He's who serious. can deliver on the comedy, but his part, uh, his part I heard his part was very straight. He's the straight man of the show. Like he's uh-huh. the one that his existence is what makes the story run. And I make no mistake. Dean has his comedic moments and scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, but he talked about that with me about how he's, it's such a serious part and, and being able to kind of as a comic, who's a funny dude to allow other people to have their moments is a difficult thing to do when you're a headliner and you've been a headliner for so long for 30 years. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, Dean's been in the game for three decades. So it's yeah. like, yeah, but it's like, it's almost like he's like the, he is the engine of the whole thing. And there is no comedy without him. Mm-hmm. Uh, being, there's no setup. There's no setup. And yeah. he has like, you know, make no mistake. It's not like he doesn't have his laugh lines. And what's mm. really cool is watching a guy like Dean be able to squeeze a laugh out of not a joke. Mm-hmm. You know, he can make setup funny yeah, or, yeah. He, or just with line delivery and yeah, yeah. performance. Um, but I was I'm very inspired by Dean. I mean, you know, it's really cool to watch him work every day at rehear- yeah. or almost every day at rehearsals and it's very humbling to have him involved because it's like, holy shit. You know what's funny? Yeah. Dean did serious. Whose house are you in? The guy who did the his, his play? Yeah, the we're in. It's not my house, but uh, we rehearsed and he may have recorded where yeah, I am. He recorded for he come to think of it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, it's all coming together now. He was because I remember the staircase in the corner and I was like, he was like, oh, we were going over lines. And stuff like that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, this is the house that he recorded that in because he that day I remember that day he was like, "Can I just record at your place?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah dude." Um, this is the house I live in. This house. Uh-huh. Um, I am somewhere in between squatting, but the guy knows I'm here and he doesn't really care. Okay. Um, so it's it's a very I got no heat or hot water, but I also don't have any rent, so it's a mm-hmm. pretty fortunate okay. living situation for someone. Pursuing- you got that award though. You got I, the best actor. I got, award. The, I got that 200 that it was the prize money was 250 bucks. Guys, nice. listen, I'm not trying to go. flat that 250 bucks, like plastic that, trophy you, that they probably scrubbed out little league champion and just put tape that said uh, best actor on it. It was it's weird fucking, that it had a, a guy doing a, a judo uh, karate kick. It seemed like a strange on yeah, it, on it. it did seem like a strange thing uh, best supporting actor like had that. a bowler on top it's very <laughs> odd <laughs> weird. Really, weird. The, what the surprised me but um well what's the play about uh yes a well, fantastic question it's a yeah. um yeah it's race the movie the play it's a spoof of uh, all of the recent uh white savior movies so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and prestige race movies so basically picture scary movie but for green book the help in figures 12 wow. years slave django um it's original title and i have a co-writer on it i also wrote it uh, we won best script also uh, my co-writer is Christian Duran, who I'm, Harry, I oh, think yeah, I know Christian buddies Duran. With Chris. Oh, Chris, yeah, yeah. yeah, Christian Duran. Uh, is uh, this the play that you were talking about the last time that you were on the, the show? I, it was. It was then wow, a movie script it's all coming together. Now, the reason I launched the cryptocurrency called Breckcoin was I was trying to raise capital to make the movie because I wanted to be able to make the movie without permission from traditional industry gatekeepers because mm-hmm. every traditional industry gatekeeper said this script is really funny but like you know it's we like can't do t- it we can't do it and it was really frustrating because we know what we're making fun of we know what we're satirizing we know audiences are will get it it's like people what? are smart enough like yeah, yeah. we're making a con- sorry i cut you off why don't you it's- do the race the movie the play the kickstarter we did launch a Kickstarter. Okay. We successfully funded our play. Beautiful. And um, that's what that Kickstarter is what funded this uh, the run of shows in the New York Theater Festival and mm. what is springboarding us to 
Uh, our most recent thing we're promoting, which I don't know when this comes out, but if it's before July 17th, we are doing a table read at the Comedy Cellar. Um, you can get tickets at race the movie, the play.com. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll take you right there. And it's at the village underground at the comedy cellar. And so, uh, I'm really thankful for everything that, uh, you know, you guys let me talk about it on your show and yeah, yeah. a lot has led to this. And I think it's only going to get bigger from here. I mean, I really think it's a perfect concept with a great script and an even better cast Mm -hmm. and from our star which is dean by the way i wanted to say this they gave me the award and i i I want to make this joke it felt like it like it felt like when uh mac lamar got best grammy over kendrick lamar that's 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 how i felt when they gave it to me you you didn't you didn't even mac lamar it it is from his grave going you know you didn't beat dean (laughs) i don't yeah i don't got no fake humility about it it. is fitting that a project that is about uh white saviors you do win best actor yeah you do understand that (laughs) that you that a white man would win best actor and the best uh, yeah, there's but literally there's someone jokes else in our from show. the play who is nominated a and black the, actor from the play. Dude, for the record, the show, the script, the story is centrally Dean's character's story. Like, right. it's a head fake. Cause my character's name is Wyatt Savior. Mm-hmm. And it's a head fake because it starts out focusing on me. But mm-hmm. after the first three scenes, it's about I me. then become like an ensemble player the first right, right. three scenes the first 20 25 minutes i'm in all of it but after that i them am, am one of the ensemble actors and it's dean is the one his character so the story is uh i play a, a white chauffeur named wyatt saver who's tasked with driving around a brilliant black musician mm-hmm. named gene yas right. on his concert tour through gene the yes. 1850s deep south and because right. it's the 1850s the it's deep green south. book go ahead exactly <laughs> yeah so it's like a green book parody and um but it's like dean's character has all of all of the heavy lifting acting wise right right like we he's do playing have, this part straight he's, he's playing, playing it straight educated yeah uh, is he also gay or no in he the- is in our in our script and uh Funny thing, funny thing. Oh, Dean said the funniest thing in a rehearsal because in the script, it does say towards the end, you know, his husband comes in and it's part of the joke is uh, his husband's name is Oscar. So he goes, I'm his Oscar. And then they smooch. (laughs) And that's like the joke. And uh, I remember Dean won rehearsal. We were like, so you guys and Dean goes, Listen, I'm letting a few N bombs fly. I don't need to kiss a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, fair, fair. That's totally fair. <laughs> um, but um, well, I, yeah. it's coming together, man. It's coming together. I mean, the cast, I can tell you every character's name is a joke in it. We have mm. Wyatt Savior, Gene Yes. We have Ted Alexandro plays a character named Ray Sist. Um, his wife's name is Ovarian, so it's uh Ray and Ovarian sis. Right. Um, their Fun. daughter's name is Jen Trefier. Yeah. Um, you know, she runs a real estate company in right, right. Brooklyn called Jen Trefier Holdings. Um, nice. she's played by Mia. What Faith does Andre Hammond. play? Andre plays a character, his name is Don Freeman, he's the one who hires me to uh-huh. work for Gene and. Um, the payment that my character gets for driving around this brilliant black musician is uh, I will be able to earn what's called an UTGO badge. O-O-T-G-O. It Mm -hmm. stands for one of the good ones. It's a distinction white allies can earn from the black community. Wow. Um, Nice. Nice. (laughs) And uh, yeah. Eagle. Who does Eagle play? Eagle plays... uh, a character named stretch who is uh, a, a slave on the plantation who we are in, introduced to him because he's on the plantation 
and he's going like, yo, check out my sheet music. Yo, check out my sheet music. Like, he's, my oh, that's funny. He's, he's, so- yeah, yeah. He's like, yo, I got the I got the hottest spirituals in the game, bro. I got them slave bars. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope. Uh, but ego a- everyone like you know how with comics like it's different with comics we didn't we're not it's not actors mm-hmm. it's comics and what has been awesome about comics is we do know funny and yeah we have a great funny script but you better believe when you get five ten funny actually funny comics in a yeah. room you better believe some just some punch Reg- ups are just some regular happen. shit is going to get pumped up but everything is going to get it's, bumped up and and what's great at, at being a comic who's making this and christian too christian was the director mm-hmm. we never had any ego about the script or our jokes it's like yeah you yo, just if, want it funny you want it i just want funny. the funniest joke i don't give a fuck if it's my mouth or if it's something dean said or yeah eagle or dre or just whoever so it's like and and what's great with comics is I don't think any of us has that insecurity about like, you know, like we well, got a bunch of funny dudes. Um, yeah, we the, all know we're the, funny. The insecurity comes when somebody's not funny and they don't want they don't want they don't want to be outshined or, you well, know, there's there's people who are it's show business, man. There's really talented people who are still self-loathing and it's never enough. It can be a double edged sword. It could be dangerous. There's people who get up and kill, but it could still, it can still be tricky, especially when it comes to acting and you have to allow other people to have their moment. There is that bit of ego that could happen. I've done done some acting with comics and, and then I've done it where it was really difficult because somebody just kept trying to steal the line, steal it. But it's, but I don't, I've never had that with people who have like established comics. I've never any established comics, because all established comics at some point in time, they do they do some acting. And mm-hmm. in, in the context of some acting, they need to stay in their lane to a certain extent, because if not, then none of it is funny. It's just, it, you know, you're just talking over each other and you're, you know, in the, the, the essence of what it is. But I mean, I, I think um, what I think also is is great that this is this is becoming a big thing where it wasn't a big thing in the first place. Do you, do you, you understand what I mean? It's, it's getting bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And so where it was like, I got this script. You guys want to do it. I think you would be great for it. And then comics are going, yo, this sounds like fun. To, this is something different, something fun. It's funny because I was talking to um, I was talking to Andre and uh, the truth of them. What, what I find, what I love about the business and i don't know if harry would agree with this or not as i love mm-hmm. about the business that I, I feel like the business is becoming more true to mm. true more truthful and look at harry's face and smirk <clears throat> on his agree. face uh, well I, let me let me make Go my, my point. point yeah yeah I'm Finish always your point talk- so I can disagree. <laughs> All right, let me. <laughs> I'm can, waiting can for you, my chance to talk. Can you hear me out <laughs> first before you disagree? <laughs> oh, so right, come on. Here's, here's the interesting thing. Uh-huh. Um, I do understand that there are still people who are getting the green light who should not be getting the green light because gatekeepers are dis- are saying there's gatekeepers who are present in certain genres of 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 comedy where they're deciding what's funny and usually the people who are non-creative are always the people who are making the decisions about what's valid in the context of social media and stuff what what's happening now there's no more business to business and business to customer meaning comedy central needs to discover me to put me on a half hour special so that people can see me now uh, it doesn't matter. You can do Comedy Central. You can do Fallon. I always talk about this all the time. A uh, good friend of mine, um, Pete Lee. Pete Lee has six Jimmy Fallons and nobody gives a fuck um, because it's more important that you get on Joe Rogan than it is you get on Jimmy Fallon. More eyes on you and Joe Rogan. In it. And so I think, and I'm not saying this, Harry, that I don't think it's all the way fair, but I think it's gonna because of the fact that when you when you are selling your product or you're exposing your product to the people, the people get to decide that we like this or we don't like this. 
Um, and because it's no more business to business and then the gatekeepers, people who have never been on stage and not creative at all. Sure. There's still that stuff. I mean, I still have situations where I have people who who are supposed to be friends of mine who don't book me in their club and I don't get no. But it, it it's mattering less and less because I'm literally taping every comedy set that I do simply because I'm trying to feed the beast. The beast is content. The 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 people want content mm -hmm. i don't believe and you tell me what you think about this i don't believe we're gonna have denzel washington's and tom cruises and mega stars anymore because there were so many streaming platforms that whereas i knew we all knew comics who got something or got on a show we knew exactly what show they got on mm -hmm. and what they were doing and then they were blowing up and they were moving up the ladder I was watching uh, Sam J's pause on HBO, which I, you know, she got that. I've never really watched one episode covered it just because I don't, it's not in my realm. And Len, I don't know if you know Leonard Oots, but Leonard Oots was talking about, yeah, you know, when I got famous and I'm, and I'm in my mind, I'm like, I, I didn't, when were you famous? <laughs> you know, so apparently he had a sitcom on channel four that I've never seen, never, never saw an advertisement for it. I may have saw a poster for it and no, and nobody. And then when it gets canceled or whatever, nobody cares. It's, it's literally like you build your fan base and then you're, they fuck with you and no, and they fuck with you. The funny thing is like, I was talking about Andrew Schultz, Andrew Schultz, uh, Netflix wanted to edit his, uh, his special. Do you know it was Netflix? Talked, huh? Do we know it was Netflix? I didn't know it was Netflix. Yeah, he said it was okay. Netflix. He said it was Netflix. And he decided he wouldn't edit it. He said, because people want to hear this. And then he marketed it himself and got downloads. And he did over a million downloads at 15 bucks a piece. And, uh, and so they were wrong about it. You know, here's a funny thing is I, I, I tell you about this conversation I had with Chris DiStefano, um, Harry. Uh, which conversation? So uh, he, on, he on did his special. Netflix wouldn't pick it up. Nobody would pick it up. Comedy Central would nobody would pick it up. Um, he decided to film it himself. And then at the end of his special, he goes, you know, fuck Netflix. Fuck this. I, I appreciate you guys coming out and supporting me. I love you guys. Thanks for fuck Netflix, blah, 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 blah. Then later on, as he picks up heat, Netflix decides to buy the special. Um, uh. So they, they offer him the money for the special, but now they want to edit out the part where he goes, fuck Netflix, right? And Chris goes, you know what? I, you know, I appreciate it. I'm not being a dick, but I'm not going to let you edit my, my, my project. Right. Um, you didn't pay for it. You didn't want it. Uh, this is what it was. That, those were my feelings at the time when, when, I, when I shot it. Um, and if you're going to edit it, then I'll just give it back to me. Let's just watch the deal and I'll go. I'll just market it to my people straight downloads. And they were like, all right, I guess we'll take it right now. As artists, we go, wow, it's really cool. that Netflix, you know, left that in. Like, how cool is Netflix that they understand the artists and the creatives and they and they didn't make him take it out. But that's not it was Chris that stood up and said, I'm not going to let no, you do yeah. that. Right. And then they put it in. So when you watch the end of his special, he goes, fuck Netflix, blah, 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 which is actually kind of cool in a way. It make, it's there's a cool factor to Netflix because he did say that, you know, um, and um. And so I think what's happening is now because it's direct from the from the um, from the from you, the, the creative directly to the customer, these gatekeepers don't get this get to get to decide. And because they don't get to decide, um, there's a truth truth to that, that. Yeah. That's, how good do you yeah. think you are? And if you put these put these put your if you put your your projects out there, people who it resonates with are going to, they're going to like it. It's going to take a little longer. You don't have the distribution. You don't have the exposure to people, but even with this, it's like, you're slowly chugging along 
along this thing. And I, I yeah. think this I really think this is going to be a big thing. I wouldn't disagree with that at all, actually. I think it's well, a, a better you, situation. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a better situation than it's ever been because you have access to just the tools to create, you know, even on right. TikTok, just as you know, just they give you the tools to even to do primitive stuff on TikTok. Right. You have right. the platform of doing your own shows. You have a platform of distributing your stuff. So, I mean, it's just what uh, what Brett's doing is amazing. Just yeah. having that platform now. So now, you know, now he can get on our show, a show yeah. that is an independent show. Right. And, you know, reach a couple, you know, thousand people as far as talking about this project that he's doing that, you know, tens of thousands of people. Tens of thousands tens. of people. Well, I'm just, you know, uh, yes. that Yeah. Tens of thousands. You're right. Um, and so, like, that's really amazing. You know, you can yeah. be your own in your own control. Uh, there's always going to be corporate things. I think that, you know, I think people always take control over stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's I don't know that it will ever be the same. It's very independent. It's the best time to be an independent will. artist because there will always be a new platform that pops up. Yeah. That, you know, I think YouTube will be bought up by somebody or whatever, you know, but. Right. And then we'll move on to we'll something on to else. Next we'll, one. TikTok we'll or always, whatever the we'll flick move on to whatever another the platform. next one's going to be. You know, we'll move on to another platform and stuff. But what's great about it is that great creative people and great creative things allow they allow themselves to if you if you're on the cutting edge and you're doing it, you you meet you. And then once you build your fan base, you can tell everybody to suck your dick like mm -hmm. <laughs> because you can do it yourself. What's interesting well, is that's that somebody how you become Harvey see, Weinstein, though. Right. Well, well, the uh, oh, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Um, well, I didn't mean it like that. Then I mean, you can develop well, a TikTok asking. following and bend people's will. And that's yeah, really well, the you point can, of all. Yeah. This. Well, you can get a great following and bend their will to suck your dick. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but what's interesting is I really feel like this is a, you know, just the whole idea of it is a, like you could just see it as a as me as a creative. I could see that this is a really good project. It's something it's different. It's they're probably very uh, nervous about it because it's a touchy subject. But people want this kind of uh, people want it, you know? I, yeah. And I think like, you know, I don't think good comedy or art comes from like a place of fear of how you're perceived. I think right. it comes from knowing and being thoughtful about what you're saying and right. far, you know, and so I, it's just, it was just frustrating, but the, why we did it as a play is because in our case, it was like, well, then we can do it and we can do it in front of a live audience and it will kill. And if mm -hmm. it kills, you can't deny the kill. You right. can talk about subjectivity of comedy, but you can never deny. You a can kill say, a was it a good play? Yes did, or no. Did it it's kill? A, and so vote up or vote down. And is it sensitive? Are these sensitive situations? Did they? But also, you're also what you're also talking about is you're dealing with these issues, um, which are um, which you got to be honest about. Like you, we need to have an honest conversation. And I think what's happening now at this point, I mean, you you see somebody comes out and they and they shoot up people at Fourth of July, and then you get people that go, well. It's because of video games and the guy had tattoos on his face and, you know, it's and there's nothing. So but I think we're also getting to the point where and I've said this to Harry and I'm, and I think, Harry, you're going to have to give me my props sooner or later. Mm. I, I the cancel culture is just about over uh, the you, there's guys who went on the chopping block and I've said this. That the that the 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 pendulum is swinging back, like it always. There's always an overcorrection for the undercorrection in the first place. Well, that's going to have a lot to do with the more independent things become. To be honest, because right. a guy like Andrew Schultz is, uh, for lack of a better term, uncancelable. Right, right. You know, He's uncancelable. He doesn't need you. He would have been canceled, or, right, or or censored. Yeah, but some of the I feel like a lot of individuals uh, harping on cancel culture, like sometimes I can feel like, you know, frustrated by some comics harping on it because for I just can go, oh, it's a marketing thing for you to do. And uh, I don't need to extend that to anyone specifically. Well, maybe Joe Rogan, but um, mm. I feel like it's like. It's like a marketing thing to say he's got to be afraid of cancel culture. I mean, 
you know. Well, he clearly doesn't because no. yeah, exactly. He's you know, we we got to the situation deal. with M bombs on, and I didn't I didn't think he should be canceled. I mean, I think that Joe Rogan has evolved in a lot of ways since he first started doing the show till now. And I mean, you're always going to have these imperfect allies. But he I also I think, said as much too. He did yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah. he yeah. said himself that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think what's interesting is you approaching this, um, you know, white savior as, you know, as what's the name of your character again? Wyatt Savior. Wyatt yes. Savior. You, you're going you're going. This is ridiculous. And I'm and I'm pointing this out. So the intention is not it's not a it's not a disrespectful intention. It's the exposition. It's the expose the hypocrisy of it and the fact that people are talking what's. It's it's interesting because I had um you know I mean this is a relationship show and we but I always want to give a, a gem here and there and and um so I initially had a consultation with a dude we got time for this or you want to do this afterwards let's Harry? do it at the Patreon because we're out okay of time on so the let's do it in the show. Patreon but um plug the thing man I'd love you to plug it and I'm, sure. I'm real happy for you bro what you oh, got going on absolutely and uh so yeah as I mentioned we're doing a live table read at the comedy cellar mm-hmm. um July 17th the village underground room if people want tickets they can go to the comedy cellar website or race the movie the play.com okay. it is a great show that one reviewer called Mel Brooks for the modern era so if nice. you miss that oh, slapstick that's a- yeah, that's yeah. a fucking that's an awesome compliment, bro. It's a very big compliment. And uh, you know, I like to think that we set out to write Blazing Saddles in 2022. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go watch Blazing Saddles when we get off. It's a class. <laughs> Come to the show, we'll comp your tickets. Yeah, both of you will, you know what? You're free. No Let's pressure. do that. I want when come. is it? You, I would love when to is come. it again. July 17th, this next upcoming Sunday at uh we got a 6 p.m. show uh okay. in their big room and uh i would happily comp both you guys because you've what I mean, time is it what deal, time is it uh it's a 6 p.m or so it's uh all right i might be able to make it. that I might i'll, be able I'll to make email that. you guys both but um, i'm in i'm in it's i'm gonna I'm do it. I'm, i know i'm supposed to do a live radio show radio serious radio with uh, karen hunter's radio show we're doing at caroline's um but i'm not sure i think it's a uh, I think it's two o'clock, so I might still be able to make it. I'd love to make it, and if not, I'd love to come see it when y'all do it again. If I can't do that, but um, that man, thanks, Brad. This was yo. Dope. This I, was dope. The, my my thanks go to you guys because, as you mentioned, like you guys have an independent platform and you've built uh, a fan base and a community of people. So yeah, you know, reaching going around the gatekeepers is what's happening. Well, I mean, that this. wasn't our intention. We just nobody wanted to fuck with us. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck them for yeah. not fucking with you. And, yeah. and now and now great guys like Jeff Singer can no young, longer use Montreal Comedy Fest as well as his as dating, a app. dating app. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck him. Piece of shit. Um, anyway, Harry, talk to us. Good to close out on a positive note here. <laughs> oh, on oh, so I, never, a never great say I don't take time out to shit on people. Um, <laughs> it's never been said, Dante. That is well, never, never? Been said. nobody no has ever said that. Nobody said Dante refused. doesn't shit on me. All right, all right. No, no, I, get, I get off mic and he goes, That guy fucking sucks. Nah, you, I would tell you that now. <laughs> uh, my stuff is just at uh, at YouTube. Speaking of independent, follow my stuff because I'm going to be doing some more things here. So please follow me on YouTube. I have stand up clips, short films. Follow my social media. A lot of the independent stuff I do is on there, uh, and I'm going to be. Uh, you know, uh, tweeting it out, you know, Instagramming, TikTok, all of them at Harry Turjanian. Uh, all my shit, you know, the Instagram, it's up. Uh, consultations is up. Uh, my YouTube page, I'm putting up stuff, putting up stand up and clips and stuff like that. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. Oh, don't forget to follow the Patreon. Patreon is uh, pay, www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Please follow this Patreon. Yeah, it helps we're going to do some to bonus keep creating content. and stuff like that. Um, content with Ray. Uh, with Ray. I keep saying Ray. Right, BB, get your oh. balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Um, I love y'all, man. Thank you. Thanks for listening.